number 169 in the All-American Tell Me the Story of Jesus.
Yes, ma'am. Uh, 398. 398. All right. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Down at the cross where my Savior died.
think I saw a hand go up a minute ago. Okay. Well, let's see here. How about number 332? I kind of like this one. A happy day. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, happy day that fixed my choice on thee, my Savior. And let it go. Sanford up here, I got 
three or four dozen pair of glasses. Once you drop down to about uh, first, uh, uh, where to start, where to stop at. Well, let's just pick it up in verse 24, put it in context. We're going down through verse 27. I want you to key in on verse 27. Uh, then we're going to actually back up and get a lot of the, uh, the uh, scripture that's in front of that. Uh, the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Colossus, verse 20, chapter 1, verse 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church. And so Paul is writing to them, and he's thanking them, you know, that they're uh, thinking about him, and uh, the life Paul lived was not an easy life. Uh, you can go over and read about all the stuff he was, went through, the beatings he went through, the imprisonments he went through, and, and uh, the shipwrecks he went through. And uh, it's, it's good to know there's people out there who are praying for you in a time of conflict. Uh, but especially pray for those. Uh, you know, we don't think much about our, our uh, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ around this world. Uh, folks like over in North Korea that have to meet in cabbage cellars. Uh, who live, live if they breathe the word of Christ, could cost them their life. Found with scriptures is a death sentence. Uh, we, don't, we don't think about them very often. We don't think about our fellow brothers and sisters in places like China. We don't think about uh, those who in America who actually make a stand for Christ these days can get ridiculed uh, for being too rigid or too, too uh, stiff. You know, it's, you, you're just a bunch of old fuddy-duddies or uh, it's that fundamentalist stuff, you know. Uh, but to stand in truth, to stand on the Word of God, uh, will bring will bring uh, the afflictions. Will bring the the uh, all the apostle Paul told Timothy that all those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You stand up for Christ, and somebody's going to ridicule you, or or uh, worse these days. Amen. Uh, but here Paul is, is reminding them of the afflictions of, of Christ in his flesh. In other words, it's, it's more than just the physical that he's talking about here. There's something spiritual going on here. It's the afflictions of Christ. What Christ suffered in his body, Paul is sharing with this church. And it's important to see that difference. That it's not just the shipwrecks and the beatings and the life that Paul's speaking of here, but there's something about the life of Christ the afflictions of Christ that is in him that he is sharing with his church and that his church shares with him. He says, Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. The hope of glory. And Lord, help me, I want to preach on Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's pray. Father, I ask for your help, Lord, as I uh, try to get past my stammering tongue, and uh, Lord, that you just uh, bring it all to pass, and Lord, help me to not do damage to your word, but to preach it in truth. Father, that uh, the saints might be strength strengthened, and that sinners, Lord, might be convicted of their uh, sin and the need to receive Christ, and that, Lord, we all may gaze upon you. Uh, Father, who is worthy of all praise and honor and glory, that, Father, we might gaze upon you in all at the wonder, at the wonder of your great mercy and love that you've showed to us, that, Father, you would, 
you who are the creator of all things, would come and sin to live within us and us in you. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now the Apostle Paul said in verse 26, it's some mystery. Now go over to the book of Ephesians, just thumb over, over uh, thumb back a page or two, I guess I should say. Uh, that's the go eat pizza with cheese section. And the cheese is Colossians. Go back to Ephesians, amen. Ephesians chapter uh, 5. And I want you to look down here. It says, uh, he's talking about uh, husbands love your wife, verse 25, excuse me. Uh, 25 of chapter 5. He says, Husband, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That's a tall order. That's a tall, a tall order, but it, it's also what we've been told to do. And I'm to love my wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh, it ought to be whatever I have to do, if I have to sacrifice for her, then that ought to be what happens. Amen. Uh, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loved his wife loved himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. And that's what Paul just spoke about in Colossians. That is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We're part of him, he's, he's in us. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, of his bone. For this cause shall a man leave uh, his father and mother, and shall be joined in his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So here's that mystery that he's speaking of again over in the book of Colossians, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. He's speaking to the church here. He's speaking of the position of the church like nothing else that, that exists in the scripture. Uh, if you lose sight of what the church is, of the precious, when Jesus came into this, this, earth, into this world, he said, I have come to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's that body. That's not. It's not sticking uh, bones. It's not mortar and brick. It's it's the body of Christ. It's you and me. If you've been born again uh, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, you are a member of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and as such, you are part of His body. Part of His body. It's not. It's not a denomination. It's not a. a it's not a particular building. But it's Christ and Christ in us. The hope of glory. Amen. Now, so the church is a special thing for God. Uh, Christ said, I'm going to build my church. It's His church. It's not my church. It's not your church. I know we speak of wherever we go. It's all my, and people ask me, so well, my church is this church and that church. But, but it is Christ's church. Yes. It's, 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 it's His building. His establishment in this world to declare and to purify those who are in it. And that's what he said up here before in the book of Ephesians that he was looking to make something holy without blemish, without wrinkles. He's ironing his out, folks. He's, he's trying to do something in us and through us that nothing else, in this, uh, nothing else in this world can even begin to touch. We think of all the great uh, nations and that have come and have gone over the years and uh, the, the, those that felt like they were going to rule this world and I want to tell you something. There's an organization in this world that is the greatest organization that has ever existed in this world and it's called the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, it is the church. There ain't anything like it else in this world. It is the most powerful. It is the most dedicated uh, instrument in this world to bring about the cause of Christ. Amen. He, he, is, he is laid directly into the lap of those who are in Him, that great privilege of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's, that's what Paul's starting out here in the Colossians about. He's talking about the, what Christ suffered. You rejoice in my sufferings for you. Fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ. He said, I'm suffering because I'm, I'm bringing the afflictions of Christ to you. 
You know, I sometimes think that, that if we had that affliction of Christ alive and, and welling up within us, it would not be so hard for us to tell somebody else about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we're in a spiritual warfare, and when the bullets get a flying, sometimes we get a duck in instead of, instead of returning fire. That's not my message. I just throw it in there. Amen. But he talks about here the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, we've got a hope that this world doesn't have. There's something in you that builds hope when you're saved. You know, you know, you know that this isn't the end of the road. You know that you close your eyes in this world, you open your eyes up in a whole new world. Amen. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Yes. When you exit this world, you stand in the presence of Jesus. The scripture says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Amen. There's something intimate about that relationship between you and between Christ. Paul said it's a mystery that was revealed in Christ. He said, that's what I'm here preaching. That's what I'm here to tell you about. That God wants to bring you into, into a relationship with Him that's beyond anything that this world has ever laid at your doorstep. Amen. And, and, and I don't care if you can kick a football from one end of the deal over the goalpost. You'll never know what it is to know the, the greatness of a life in Christ until you know Him. Amen. We give accolades to, to people who roll around you know, with this big skin and, and or dribble something on the floor or knock something across the green into a hole. Or We think of wonderful, great things that they've done, but I'm going to run your mind back to the life of the church and I want you to think about places like Africa and South America where people went and laid down their life for people they never knew. They went and suffered the afflictions of Christ in their body so that they could know Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. Nice. Now it's interesting to me that when those missionaries and them old time preachers went to places like Africa, the people started putting on clothes and they quit tattooing themselves and uh, they started uh, you know, getting together and worshiping and praising God and it changed and transformed their lives and their, their families began to be united and knit together. But now we come to a society that wants to cast God out. And what are they doing? They're taking their clothes off and they're tattooing themselves on one end of the world or the other. They're going back to the jungle. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Instead of going on and having their lives transformed by Christ, they're going back to the other side of the world. God help us. God help us. Amen. There's a place. There's a place a relationship, something that God wants to do in people's lives that they can't get in this world. The Bible tells us that, we, that that mystery, that being in the body of Christ, didn't come without a price. Look up here, look up here in, in verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of His cross. You know what you used to be at war with God? You want, to, you want to know why most people run from the name of Christ and they run from, from the, that when preachers get to talking about sin and it gets to the bottom. Why? Because they're an enemy of, the enemy of God. They're on the wrong side of the world. But God's come to reconcile us. He stepped in this world in that robe of flesh, went to the cross of Calvary, died, laid down His life for your life. He took your sin upon Himself so that you could be made the righteousness of God. He wants to change and transform our lives. And that relationship between us and Him came at a price. But you entered that relationship and He says, here's peace. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Amen. It's a peace the world can't give you. It's a, it's a peace the world can't take away. It's a peace that only comes when you've stepped into that relationship with a holy God. It, it, it's, it's that that honeymoon. It's, it's, that, 
It's that relationship between you and God to fight through the rest of this life arm in arm and letting Him to work in your life. Boy, come at a price. It cometh the blood that was stained upon that old rugged cross. We sing that song on that hill far away. You know, we sing about that old rugged cross and we're going to cling to that old rugged cross. I tell you, we sing a lot of things we don't do. Amen. Yeah. We sing a lot of things we don't believe. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do I? Do I really? Have I really, really given Him my heart to love Him with all my heart? Have I really gave myself to Him as I gave myself to my wife or if I gave myself to some other thing in this world? Do I love Him with all of my heart, my soul, and my mind? Or am I saying, okay, God, it's, it's, you know, I'll take the blood on the cross, get into heaven, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk this world by myself. Lord, help us. Yes. Lord, help us. We need, we need to, to step into that truth of that relationship. It's not, it's not just, I'm, I'm going to go to church this Sunday, but it's, I'm going to come and get with the rest of the family. I'm going to come and get with the body of Christ. I'm going to come and get with Christ Himself. Yes, amen. When we enter and step into this door, we're not just stepping in here to, to, to skip around or mess around or sing some songs or listen to some <laughs> teacher Babylon up here. Uh, what we've come is for Christ. Yes, amen. The songs we sing are to, are to well up out of our souls before His throne. To worship Him is like a love song you're singing to your wife. Amen. You say, you don't sing love songs to your wife? Well, you ought to. Even if you can't sing, you can hum one. <laughs> Amen. 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 Man, it was a price that was paid. Sacrifice. Paul said that, that suffering of Christ that's in me. He said, I've come to preach that to you so that you know what it is, so you know what it is to have Christ in you. The hope of glory. Now we know how we get in Christ. The Bible says over, over in in uh, second, uh, First Corinthians chapter uh, chapter five, it talks about us being baptized in the body of Christ, and, and people get that all messed up. They they get that baptism of the Holy Spirit all all fouled up. First uh, Corinthians chapter twelve, I think maybe I, I, I think I told you wrong. First Corinthians chapter twelve. Let's drop down to verse twelve. Do you know that you and I are not divided? We ought to be divided. For as the body is one, Christ isn't, isn't, isn't strung out all over the place. For as the body is one, hath many members, and all the members of, of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. Now he's still speaking about this mystery, this mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. For by one Spirit, capital S, are we all baptized into one body? How did you get into that body? The Holy Spirit took you and put you there. Yeah, amen. You didn't do anything to get in there. Yeah. All you did was call out to a holy God and said, God, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And if you'll let Jesus, if you'll have Jesus, if Jesus will have me, would you save me, Lord, by your grace? The moment that entered past your lips and you entered, uttered the word of Christ into the ears of God, he saved you and the Holy Spirit took you and placed you into Jesus Christ. That's what baptism is. It's to submerge you into something. We baptize in water. That's what going under the water would be submerged in, baptized in. It represents the Holy Spirit baptism of putting you into Jesus. And then the coming up out of that water. Is the same as when he stepped out of the grave. To come up in newness of life. To walk it and to live it with him. It says, for well, by one spirit we all baptize in one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Well, that's how we got in the body, but now how about him getting into us? It says, whether we bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. How do you get water into you? Yeah. That ain't difficult. <laughs> you drink it. Right? <coughs> Been all made to drink into one spirit. 
So when the Holy Spirit comes into you, He not only placed you into Christ, but now He comes into you. You're, 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 you are eternally united to Christ, never to be separated. If you can't get eternal salvation out of that, security of salvation out of that, I don't know where you're going to find it. Amen. The Bible says that He is signed, sealed, and delivered us. We are sealed unto that day of redemption. Yes, we are kept by the power of God. Amen. The power of God. The God who created the heavens and the earth. Over in the Colossians it talked about Him. That all things were created by Him and for Him. When He put this world into place and He put all the planets running around it and scattered the stars all across the, the heavens with the span of His hand, He put it all up to us, the power of God at work. And that power of God is what keeps you. Keeps you. Yeah. Break the seat. Let's, let's see what little wimpy human being can handle that. And that's God's grace. Yeah. That's Christ in you, the hope. The hope of glory. But see, he didn't just save us to wait around till we die. He's got something to do. He, he asks, he wants our life to be a reflection of him. If it's Christ in us and us in Christ, then Lord, help us to be a reflection of Jesus, not of the things of this world. I don't want people to see me as I once was. I don't want to be as I once was. Thank God for the change that, that he made when he, when he saved my soul. But I want something within me that if there's a change within me, there ought to be a change without on me. Does that make sense? If there's something on the inside different, there ought to be something on the outside different. If God cleaned up the pot on the inside, some of that water done got, got out here on the outside. Amen? Starting to get rid of some of that B.O. and some of the other uh, odoriferous things that happen to our body. He's cleaning us up, making us something out of our lives for His honor and His glory. Amen. Yes. Well, look up here what He says. Look what He says. Uh, Colossians chapter 1 again. Uh, verse 22. Well, verse 21, you have sometimes were alien enemies you know, in your mind by wicked works. Yet now He has reconciled. He's put us together. Reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death, you were reconciled because of his sacrifice. No other means of being reconciled to God except through what Jesus did. Amen. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Do you know that he saved you to present you someplace? I don't, I don't know if you can grab this, but when you're at a wedding, right? And they, well, let, let, let's let me go back to mine, okay? I can speak more effectively there, I guess. But you know, I, I am never going to forget that day when the back doors of that church opened, those double doors of that back church back there where my wife was at, opened. And she walked through them. Man, it just makes you suck in your breath a little bit. One of these days, as John said over there, Remember, remember what he said over there in the book of Revelation? Look what he said over in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1. Deals, John deals with the church. 
But I'm, I'm, I'm moving to the place where, the, where God's going, what God's going to do with His church. Amen. And one of these days, we're going to be presented in the presence of the Holy God. That double doors is going to be open. That door is going to be open, and the bride's going to come in through. It. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee the things which must be hereafter. And immediately, and immediately I was in the Spirit. Yeah. One of these days, there's a door. After the church, after these things, what he's been speaking of for three chapters, he's been speaking about the church, the body of Christ. He said, after these things, there's a door going to be opened. And somebody's going to come through that door. He says, if somebody's down here, it's going to go up there. Somebody up there is going to say, come up here. And the church is going to lose its gravity, and we're going to go with him forever into eternity. Can you imagine what a day that's going to be? Because we've entered that door to be presented to somebody. Now, when Renee was walking down the aisle, she wasn't coming up there for the preacher. She wasn't coming up there for the groomsmen or the bridesmaids. She was coming up there for the groom. She was going to be presented come up there and her daddy walked her down the aisle who gives and presented up through there you know that one of these days you're going to be presented to Christ as Christ is working in you the body of Christ is going to be there but you're going to be presented to him holy you're going to be presented to him unblameable unreprovable Amen. the devil himself will not be able to stand there in your presence or in God's presence and say you can't let him in because he's a sinner and, and he's, he is rotten to the core and all of that was true except that now you are in Christ and Christ is in you the hope of glory. Amen. Holy. Man, what a day that's going to be. Thoughts, all pure, righteous, unblameable. They can't blame me for anything he Unreprovable to be presented before a holy God. Paul said, That's the reason I preach. That's re Look, verse 23. He said, The hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature was under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. He said, That's why I'm here. You know, that's. That's what a preacher preaches for, is to see people grow into Christ, to see them deepen their love and deepen their hope in Him. It's not, it's not just to see numbers or, or pews filled, all that would be great and wonderful, but, but if there isn't something happening between those who are there and Christ, it's a waste of time anyway. Think about your hope. What are you basing your hope on? If it's anything less than the blood of the cross, the blood that was shed by Christ, you don't have any hope. What are you basing your life on? If it's not the life that you receive by being placed into Christ by the Holy Spirit, by receiving that life by, by faith in Christ, you don't have life. And when you come and stand before eternity and you don't have that stamp of God upon your life, you don't have a future in heaven. Only a fearsome, fearsome, fearsome judgment because of your sin. But if you know Jesus, then the Christ who is in you 
becomes your hope. It becomes your glory. <laughs> and it all radiates before the throne of His grace to bring honor to Him because He alone is worthy of all praise and glory and honor. Do you know Christ is in you? The hope of your glory? Because if Christ ain't in you, there is no hope. But you have the greatest hope in the world. The only hope in the world. If you have Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, again we come to your throne of grace, giving you thanks and praise for your goodness and your mercy, Lord, wherewith you've loved us. Father, with an everlasting love that you demonstrated that love upon Calvary, that even while we were yet sinners, Lord, you died for us. Father, we're so grateful, so grateful that you would love us enough to shed your precious blood. Father, we're grateful that through the wooing of the Holy Spirit, Father, Father, through that calling of, of, of our emptiness and death, Father, you've brought us into life and into hope. That, Lord, you've taken us out of this body of flesh and placed us into Christ, Lord, to do a work in our life that nothing else can do in this world. That, Father, you can present our lives before you holy. Father, that we are pure, spotless, the pure, spotless bride of Christ. Without wrinkle, without blemish. Father, we stand in that thought as our only hope. That hope, Christ in us, our hope of glory. Now, every head bowed and every eye closed, I ask you today, do you know Christ? Do you know him as your only hope? Do you know that hope, that glory that lies within that? That your life is hidden in him and he's in you? Do you know that? Then rejoice, Christian. Ain't nothing like it in this world. No relationship like it in this world. May I say unto you, if you don't know Christ, today you can have that relationship. You call upon him who without, without prejudice will save your soul. If you'll call upon the name of Jesus, whose name alone is worthy to save you. Father, we bow our heads and give you thanks and praise again today. We thank you for Christ. Thank you for the hope and the life that's in him. And Father, I pray that this truth, this mystery that was revealed by the Apostle Paul will press home in our hearts the wonderful, wonderful gift, the wonderful relationship that we have with you, which is you and us, our hope. Our hope. We love you and we praise you. And we thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' precious name, amen. And amen. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. What a thought.